Hello, and this is video three of the screencast series for the respiratory system. And here we get into respiratory physiology. First off, we'll talk about pressure. And so this is a bigger version of that same diagram we saw in the previous screencast uh, that, was, that I was talking about the pluri. But here I'm going to be talking about the pressures that you find in these chambers. There's three to consider here, four really. Atmospheric pressure, which we'll say at sea level is 760 millimeters of mercury. Sometimes you can put it in atmospheres or other measurements, but we'll just say uh, it's 760 millimeters of mercury atmospheric pressure. Intrapulmonary pressure, and you see some uh, symbols here. P this means pressure of the atmosphere, pressure pulmonary, pressure uh, intrapleural, but I didn't sub I didn't. Uh, subscript that. But in any case, atmospheric pressure and intrapulmonary pressure are the same if you have an open airway. So if you just open up your, your airway, don't close it off with your throat. Uh, the air on the inside of your lungs is continuous with the air in the atmosphere and therefore they have the same pressure. Now this PIP, that's how you should write it, it's PIP in between, right? This is intrapulmonaries here. Uh, ribs are here. The space between the ribs and the lungs with that fluid inside has a pressure on average about four millimeters of mercury less than the uh, intrapulmonary pressure. The reason this is, is because these lungs tend to want to contract. They want to get smaller. And when they pull away from the wall, that's going to decrease the pressure in this chamber. What the effect is, is that because this pressure stays below the lung pressure, that the lungs are always gonna be drawn towards the outside. They're always gonna be kind of pulled open. And that's important when we want to breathe in, as we'll see in the next, in the next slide. Uh, you can measure, you, uh, there's a measure called the transpulmonary pressure, which is the difference between the intrapulmonary in the lungs and the in, uh, intrapleural outside of the lungs. And you always want it to be greater in the lungs than in that intrapleural space or else you get uh, a collapsed lung. And that's what will happen when you when you suffer an injury to your rib cage is that this pressure then becomes greater and the lung will uh, collapse on itself. <clears throat> now the next slide, if it'll go to it, has a blank space because I'm going to do some, I'm going to do some, some very basic math to explain this. First, let me describe what's called Boyle's Law. And P1, V1, P2, V2 equals P2, V2 just simply says pressure one times volume one equals pressure two times volume two. Which means, if you want to put it in English, is that the gas pressure varies inversely opposite uh, with volume. So if volume gets bigger in a closed container, pressure goes down. If volume gets smaller, uh, pressure goes up. So let's see if this drawing function will work. So let's just say I've got a uh, circular container, a, a, a sphere, just to make it easy, right? Let's just say that this is one liter, just for funsies. And let's say that this one liter is at 760 millimeters of mercury pressure. So we're at one atmosphere pressure. This is a closed container, right? If I make it bigger, let's say I double its size. Now it's two liters. And I didn't let any more air in, I just expanded the container. So it's got the same amount of air inside of it. It's just that that air has to spread out to take up a space that's twice as big. So I, I'll just show you what the answer is. What's seven, this thing's twice as big, which means that the pressure is going to be half as big. So that is... Uh, 380. Let's, let's hope I did that quick mathematics correct. So this will be 380 millimeters. That's six. Uh, yep, yeah, that's right. 380 millimeters of mercury. Well, I can just tell you that, but let's see how that works in the formula. So P1 is 760. V1 is one liter. That's going to equal we had, we had we were trying to figure out what this one was right so i'm going to say i'm going to go uh, p2 
times the volume now, which is 2. This left side of the equation is 760 equals P2 times 2, which means if I divide both sides by 2, then you've got 380 equals P2. Now, you didn't have to do that scary equation to figure that out, right? If the volume doubles, the pressure is cut in half. If the volume is cut in half, the pressure doubles. So if I was to take the same one liter container at 760, and instead I smooshed it down to 0 0.5 liters, well now I've got the same amount of air over here, but it's in a container half as big. So the pressure's doubled, right? So that would be 1520. Uh, you're not going to need a calculator on the test, but you do need to be able to understand that. I'll probably put them in smaller numbers that you don't have to double 760. I know that's not easy for a lot of people in their head. Uh, so I, I'll use small numbers like ones and twos and fours. Um, but do understand the relationship. So that's Boyle's Law. Now let's just show you what it means to your lungs. In this case, this is a clo these have been closed containers, right? These are sealed off. Uh, in your lungs, there's a hole. So if I decrease, I'm going to erase this. All right, so here's my lungs uh, like this. Here's the tubes going out. So there's like an actual tube that leads to the outside. Now, if I expand this container, it looks like a sad face. But if I expand this container by dropping the diaphragm and moving the ribs out, it's the same thing as taking that ball and making it twice as big, except for now, there's a hole in the ball. If I make that chamber bigger, pressure is still going to go down. Pressure will drop. And as a result, let's just say that pressure went from, let's say that pressure, we doubled the size of the lungs, and then theoretically pressure would be half of uh, 760, which is 380. So if pressure inside the lungs is 380, and pressure outside of here is 760, air is going to go down its pressure gradient. So when you expand the rib cage and depress the diaphragm, air blows into this low pressure zone. When I compress the rib cage or relax, the pressure in the lungs will be greater and air will go down its pressure gradient to the outside. All right, that's all for drawing for now. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, all right, a little bit about our actual breathing in and out. So the term, the technical term for, for breathing in, uh, we always say inhale, exhale. It's, it's really inspiration, expiration, inspire, expire. Uh, inspiration is active. That is, if you're just sitting there, and I want you to, if you're listening to this, practice along, like take a deep breath. And while I'm talking, hold it, but don't hold it by going, don't close your throat off, just hold it open. And you'll notice that after a minute, it starts to get tired. Your, your ribs get a little tired. You know, your body's holding its position. All you have to do to breathe out, to expire, is just stop contracting those muscles. Just relax. So I'm breathing in. And then when I want to breathe out, I just relax. So inspiration is always active you have to contract muscles these ones primarily uh, to get the air in if you want to really breathe in deep you're going to get some other muscles involved you'll have to get your neck and shoulder muscles and you'll probably sit up really straight and you'll hunch your shoulders up uh, but in any case it's it's active expiration is passive most of the time if you want to blow out birthday candles or a little pig's cabin you're going to need to incorporate some other muscles like the internal intercostals and your abdominal muscles. And then I give you a little list of some other ways that you can move in air, in, air in and out that aren't respiratory. Uh, you're not trying to get oxygen when you sneeze or cough. And hiccups, who knows what's going on. Uh, I do have a challenge for you though. Next time you get hiccups, 
take take a little bit, a teaspoon of vinegar. It doesn't even have to be that much. Just get a little vinegar in your mouth and swallow it. Those hiccups are gone. And that is uh, screencast number three.